Team Trip TV, episode 39. Myself, Sam Law. I've got Coach with me. What's happening, people? I've got Dot to me. Yes, people, what are you saying, man? Yeah, and we're going to go straight into the Anfield game. Liverpool ran at 3 1 winners. Oh, boy. The title's good in Anfield, it seems. Yeah, man. Around midday today, I made a bold <laughs> <laughs> I made, a, I made a bold prediction in our sports group. I said um, the unbeaten run at Anfield ends today. It did end shit. Mm. It didn't end shit. You get me? That prediction, to be fair, was... um. It was more hope, innit? Yeah, 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 it was hope. Like, I thought, let me not laugh. It was hope. I definitely believed that City could do it. But... Why? Just... I mean, like... <sighs> Liverpool started... You know what? City started well. Liverpool were they couldn't string two or three passes like, together. City were very intense, but it just seemed like you know the first. Let's talk about the goal first of all. So, um, the ball comes off Bernardo Silva Silva's hand, yeah, and it it, it ricochets onto Trent Alexander's Alexander's arm, and Liverpool counter and Fabinho scores. Coach. I was saying they should have brought that back initially. Like, what what do you think about that? They can't bring it back because of the first handball. So I think if it was the old rules, Bernardo Silva's handball is accidental. And um, Trent Alexander's handball is obviously he's in an unnatural position, so it's a clear handball. But I think because of these new rules that are saying about if the attackers, if it hits their hand for whatever reason and it advances the ball and stuff like that. They're not gonna give they're not gonna give that handball that Trent had. So Trent's one's a handball. Um Silver's one's accidental. But without Silver's first handball, you don't get the second handball. That's that's my that's my whole thing. And also with that, going to the lead up, City won possession of the ball back again and kick Can you say one possession though? Because the ball came and they just they snatched at it to get no, it out. You get it out, but you get it out into the into Rose Ed. Anywhere, toe punt it away. Get some air on it. This guy passed it on the ground to Fabinho. He took a touch out of his feet and banged it in. Mm. So for me, yes, it was a handball by Trent, 100%. But without Bernardo Silva's first handball, you don't get the second handball. And that's what VAR is going to tell you. Dots, what do you think about that? To me, the handball rule this season is super unclear because if Bernardo Silva... If the ball went in his advantage and he scored, they would cancel it, right? Yeah, yes would. or no? They would cancel it, right? So, for me, if they, if that, if that, is that's that's a handball for Bernardo Silva. I don't know. Should they stop play there straight away? I don't know. Or they should. I don't know. Yeah, so when so when Trent when Trent handballed it, ref should have just stopped in it like ah. Oh. No, but I, then he's playing advantage. Probably. I don't know if the ref even saw the first handball. That's so if it is the first handball, there's an the issue there then. But this, is what I'm but this, but this is, but this is my whole point. But either way. VAR would have said no penalty because they would have caught the first handball even if he gave the handball because they would have had to go back to the monitor to make sure it's a it's a clear handball which Trent won it was clear handball yeah. but they would have seen the build up to it and saw Bernardo Silva's handball okay. and they would have said no okay cool cool so they've seen Bernardo Silva's ball to hand let's yeah, let, yeah, let's yeah, let's, 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 hand, yeah, let's get the, the phrases yeah, correct because Bernardo Silva was ball to hand, Trent was handball, right? However, yeah. any handball in the goal yeah, scoring. Yeah. So now, the, the VAR people, they've seen the ball to hand of Bernardo Silva. Are they saying, okay, carry on playing? Is that the rule? In terms of what? If, if Trent didn't handball it or. You just got to play on. Because it doesn't lead to them, it doesn't lead to a goal. And plus, you're all the way, you're all the way back in the defensive box of the other team. Okay, cool. So now they have to trek all the way to the other end. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. So. Um, if it, if they can't if they don't score from it, play continues. Yeah. yeah. Fine. So play continued, and then a handball has happened. So from there, it's a handball. It's the yeah. same phase of play. It's not. It's no, not. It's not. Bro. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same phase of play because they'll just bring it back to handball to handball. So we have to penalise the first handball, no, whether no, it's accident or not. Agreed. No, 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 no. I'm saying that we've agreed, but that's what they will say because to bring to to look at the second handball, you have to look at the whole phase of play. 
That's the whole. It's still in the same oh, phase. It no, no, but it doesn't matter. Humble is a humble. Exactly. They should have. This, this is what I'm saying. You got to think about the phases that they've been talking about this season. Even the referees came on Sky Sports to explain. Like a lot of people are confused about what's phase one, what's phase two, what's. Oh, but but let, me okay, let me ask you. Okay, let me ask you. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. All right, cool. Oh my god. Old Trafford, Man United versus Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. Someone got brought down. Who is it that got brought down? Um, Mane by McTominay, and they carried on. They didn't think it was a foul. They looked back at it, if it was a foul, and if they deemed it to be a foul, then the Rashford goal wouldn't have stood. But because they thought that McTominay's uh, tackle on Mane wasn't a foul, was a clean, they they let it go. So why didn't they think that was a handball? That's what I'm saying, because that handball led to the goal. Now, they've obviously brought it back, like, okay, was it a handball or not? What else would they be checking in for? This is, but this is my whole point in terms of the whole... Handball thing, what Dots is saying, it's all up in the air. No one knows the handball, the play on, the this. I'm agreeing with you guys that the handball yeah. fi- the handball system all round, they've messed it up this season yeah, yeah. because they've tried to rewrite the rule. And they made it one thing for scoring and one thing for this the other. Not, we had bro, that bro, yesterday. The thing is, the thing is G, Trent's, I, are they saying to me yeah. that Trent's was in handball? That's because that's if, the only no, question, that's, that's yeah. Is it handball or not? Yeah. Is it a handball or not? If it's a handball, not that if it was a penalty, penalty. you know, no, no, no. no. Because Bro. maybe maybe that maybe they will say it wasn't a penalty because the ball came off Bernardo's first. Bro. However, it was a handball though. No, but, Samson, what's a handball in the box? It's a penalty, G. It's a penalty. I I, I, I just I just think the only way they can yeah, escape yeah. here is if they think if they tell us we don't think that was a handball by Trent. That's the only way. No. If they say that was a handball, regardless of how the ball got to his hand, yeah, you're, right, there, you're right, you're right, you're right. Pen- oh, it's a penalty. So I'm, I'm staying, oh, I'm staying oh, by that. It's a penalty. penalty. But what I'm saying is that this is this is where they're letting themselves out of it again. It's that phase of play. Once the ball is received back by City, City is now classified in football as a new phase of play. What Rodri or whoever kicked the ball to Fabinho does that's is now late, down to the... No, that's, that's, technical, that's really technical. No, no, no you're that's saying... Late. I'm saying late. I'm t- we're talking about the goal, though. Mm. That's what leads up to the goal. The handball leads up to the goal. No handball, no goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm, so, not really. Not no, really. no handball from Trent, no goal. Not really. The ball's going past his arm. So, they don't break, they're not going to break down the other end of the score. Not really. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was... Nah. The whole point of the handball was to Like you said, the there was at least 15 seconds, 20 seconds after that, no, after that bit. I'm just saying the handball is now led to the break on. Because yeah, Van Dijk yeah, yeah, won yeah, the yeah. ball and he's pushed the ball forward. Yeah. Without Trent's handball, the ball's just that going would, to that, that, would, that would have gone to Sterling. Yeah. Sterling was behind. That, you know what I'm saying? Or whoever was there. Do you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying that VAR will get away with, guys, it wasn't directly from the handball because City won possession back and gave it back to Liverpool, which is phase two of play Damn. and Fabinho scored. I'm, right. I'm agreeing yeah, with yeah, you. No, I agree. With, uh, yeah, I think we can all agree that the handball rule this season yeah. needs yeah. to no, be no. Okay, cleared cool. up. But all this phase maze crap it's simple. No, 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 bro. Listen, because it's simple. It's not about phases. There, it's is it a fucking handball or not? So, excuse my language. Is it a handball or not? It doesn't matter about phases and no, smashes. You can't say that. Dots. It, it doesn't bro, matter. That's, my God. You're talking for yourself. No, we're bro. talking about the football rules. Oh, gee, fam. What, what's the rules though? Because if, we didn't check even the rules. even before changing the rules. This is not even a part of change. In football, if the ball, if you're blocking the ball with your hand, my God, yeah. it's a handball. Yeah. Come on. It's a handball to me. That's a handball to me. But listen, bro. Come on, guys. But listen, but what you I... You got VAR to check Okay, it, wait, man. let me ask you, though, because let's let... Listen, listen, listen when, man. when you said VAR checked it, this is what I'm saying. VAR did check it, yes? Yeah, they did check and it. And they deemed it not to be handball. Why did they deem they it? I don't know. No, no, yeah. no. They they did. I'm, I'm saying that I'm looking at it from VAR's perspective, mm. yeah? There's, t- there's, there's two incidents that happened. You now say we've got to cancel out the two handballs because without City's handball, there's no Liverpool handball. That's one. The second action is when Mane got into the box, crossed the ball, Rodri got possession of the ball. What Rodri does after that is down to him. That's the second phase of play. That's what VAR's going to tell you. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's correct. That's what I think you need to, don't get it twisted. I'm agreeing with you guys that it's all BS. But in the laws of the game, this season, yeah, this season, that is how that goal stands. Yeah, is what it I'm is annoying. It's annoying. Why should be concerned about what's happened all day after? We've asked you to check the incident in the box where it hit Trent's hand. It should be simple, guys. Was it a handball or not? Yeah, guys, guys, no, 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 chill, guys. Was it a handball? Let's rewind yeah, this. Guys, I've got the phone to the air. Yeah, guys, studio. Was it a handball, please? With the, with was it a handball? Okay, dots. With the new rules of the handball, whether we agree with it or not. Or was Bernardo Silva handball? That's ball to hand. No, 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 no. Okay. You're talking oh, about oh, the old. Oh, right. With, right. with the new rule, how yeah. they've written it, 
his 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 arm advanced the ball. So that's why I said it, it doesn't it doesn't work yeah. for the attacker, but it works for the Fine. defender. But with the new rules, yeah. they should have stopped the play then. Or they should have brought, I don't know, I don't get it. Because he didn't score, does play continue? But this is my whole point. I just I want this, this is what I'm trying to explain to you guys. If if the goal if the goal came direct if no other Man City bo- per- person touched the ball and the ball went into the net, you could legit you could legit bring that back and say because of even Bernardo Silva's handball the play should have stopped hand, dead. But because Rodri got the ball back, Man City got the ball back and gave it back to Liverpool. Way you off, have to. Way off, no, I know back, he's, he's, he's saying off, he's saying leading up to the goal. Why, you're saying when they check the goal, why not pull it all the way back because Trent handled the ball? And I'm telling you, you're talking about two different phases of play. For me, G, like, bro. Okay, cool. So if Bernardo Silva scored, we've all agreed that, they would have cancelled it. Cancel it. They but they would have cancelled it like Nino. They would have cancelled it, yeah. bro. Just because he didn't score, yeah. does it play continue? Okay, cool. So if if he right. so it's ball to hand then. If he if he handballed it like if he handballed it, yeah. and they would have stopped it straight away. The ref would have blown the whistle and stopped it. For Bernardo Silva. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So he would have blown the whistle. But he, they don't think that's handball. That's why it continued. The ref didn't think it was handball for or starters. He didn't think it's handball or, or, he's or he didn't see it. it. Yeah, fine. The VAR people they've probably seen it as ball to hand like we've seen it, right? So that's not even an issue. That's not even an issue. Whether it came off, it's ball to hand and it ricocheted. It happens. Mm-hmm. After that, someone has purposely handballed it you've blocked the ball with your hand so it's a it's a penalty yeah, it's so I, clear I, 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 think, I think it's a handball but you know what like it, it was early in the game and I want to hear, hear I want to hear what they're going to say because they usually like explain their decisions on Monday, yeah on the Monday they usually explain the decisions I want to literally I want to read and hear what they have to say about this it's going to be freestyling like, it's like, like, like David of, like all these Come guys on, but listen okay can we say that if that wasn't the case that this wouldn't be be the result. It's, I know, I know. I'm saying, obviously, let's just look at it from let's look, look at it from this. Yeah, I, Liverpool played well. City seemed to, you know, their heads. They yes. had chances before yeah, that. Listen, from that, from that, um, from that first incident, they were visibly rattled, visibly v- rattled. Like, raw, this is great. Like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And they've scored on top. It's a double whammy. We didn't get a penalty, and they scored. It's a double blow. They were rattled from there. Yeah. And then the second came quickly after. Yeah, but before that second, Aguero had chances. Let's talk about Aguero today. Aguero, one of the best strikers ever to grace the Premier League. But this is his eleventh game at Anfield now. You know, no luck. He hasn't scored. Was it? Were they just too intense for him today? Or I think I think Van Dijk and um, what's his name, Lovren, they just tied him up. They just kind of doubled up on him. He didn't really have no room to manoeuvre. He got a couple of half chances and stuff like that, like he would do because he's a world class striker. But on a whole, I just think he's not ready. The reason why it's maybe in Anfield, he's just not ready for that intensity. Hmm. Like for me, like he's not. They just they just had him up, and they've been having him up for the last few years, and he's just somewhere where he just can't score. Let's talk about the difference in teams, though. Dots, yeah. Mm. City, they have the ball. You expect them to be intense, right? I expected them to be intense. Um, there's a f- well, there's a few. There was a few players that were intense. For me, De Bruyne and Sterling. Played with like they played with the intensity, like yeah, we need to we need to fight fire with fire and match what yeah, Liverpool's like, intensity is gonna be. Every time both of them got the ball, they were charged. You yeah. could see they were charged. For me, going back to Aguero, I wouldn't say they handled him. He had chances. Just yeah. on another day, they're net. He's netting those chances. You get me? It's just one of them days for yeah. me. Like, and I said it in a group. He was poor, and a couple of people disagreed. I think he was poor today because of because of those chances. Even the one where De Bruyne put it on a plate for him and he and set an off. Yeah, and yeah. he didn't he didn't make the contact that he wanted to make. That's poor for mm. me from Aguero. He should be getting that. All it's chicken and chips for you, bro. Uh, let's give Liverpool some credit now because it's going to be hard, obviously, as a United fan. But um, coach, you even said that you're you're you, you obviously you coach the kids as well. You said today there was a kind of game where you had the possession, you were better technically on the ball, but the other team were just bang bang going forward. Yeah. What would you say about this Liverpool team? Like literally, it's like two balls and they're in the box, in the opposition's box. Yeah, shout out to my under elevens who got smoked today. But <laughs> we'll, 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 talk about, we'll talk about them next week. Anyway. I'll talk to them next week. But yeah, um, in terms of, I think it's not only the way Liverpool play. I think the the atmosphere in Anfield is is very different. The crowd are on your back and stuff like that. I just don't think City, the players that Pep has always bought. Has never been high intensity players. 
what they've what they've done, they know how to they know how to press well as in a group. Yeah. They know how to press spaces and not let you out, and then yeah. they can express themselves. Yeah. The problem is with City is that guess what? Most of the nine times out of ten, when you play other teams, when you press them and win the ball, they're just like, oh, you know, we can't press City. Otherwise, we just get pulled apart. Yeah. Liverpool don't have that mentality. Mm. They're like, okay, you're gonna press us, we're gonna press you, but we have more players with that high intensity, mm. and we we're also quicker on the break as well yeah. and stuff like that. So I think. With Liverpool off the ball, they are better than City. And on the ball, they attack differently. On they, the ball, I would they say... They don't take too many touches. Yeah. Because yeah. They're, they're, once again, I've said it before, their middle three's job is to get it up to the front three as quick as possible. Not to play little triangles between themselves, five, six touches. Where City, De Bruyne has to get a touch. Silva has to get a touch. And Rodri has to get a touch. It's not so much that they have to get a touch. What they do, they pass it left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right, until... Uh, yeah, told us a gap. Yeah, yeah, there's a gap open, and and with Liverpool, with their intense pressing off the ball, this is what makes them the team right. that they are. It's just hard for City to number one find those gaps, and then guess what? Even in City back of their minds, even in Pep's back of his mind, he knows that yo, if we lose the ball, exactly. these guys Two are going passes. to break on us. Two passes. Because yeah. That's their job. The midfielders when out them, them guys is to get the ball up to Salah, get mm. it to Mane, get mm. it to Firmino to mm. create that damage. Mm. Yeah, man. Liverpool's attack to sum up in a few words, it's punishing and deadly. Mm. It's punishing and deadly. I don't know how they do it, but from Trent to who, who are, like from Trent to, somehow, sometimes they even do it to Trent to Robertson to Salah. In oh, one, in one, there, there was one sequence of plays uh, uh, play where Salah's Robertson, no, Trent, yeah. Salah's goal was Trent to Robertson yeah. from, and then Robertson to Salah, just yeah. like that. Just like Three that. Three passes, G. I don't mm-hmm. know how they do it. It's, to me, it's that like, they're so ruthless and quick with their passing, yeah? Mm. They catch, they catch so many teams off guard. Mm. Even the way they just restart plays, quick. It's like it's, it's so intense. They try to catch you off guard, basically. It's simple as that. Coach. And, and the thing mm. about it as well with Liverpool, like some people don't mention, we all know in the game of football where the game is won and lost. The game is won and lost in the centre of the park. And with them, they're the, probably the hardest working trio. Whatever trio it is, yeah, they're the cool. hardest yeah. working trio in the league. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, uh, all right, coach. Obviously, I said to you, you know, Wijnaldum, one of the best centre mid, one of the best centre midfielders right now in the league, and you were saying, nah, like he's not Tell anything the special. What this guy said. Tell the listeners what this yeah, guy said. He's not anything special. If he was in like another team, would he be doing so well? It's because he's in the system that he's playing. Personally, I thought you're right, but you're also wrong in terms of mm-hmm. Wijnaldum is actually a solid bowler. Now, dots, another one. That you said was Fabinho. Fabinho for me, I think never touched on it in the game. He said Fabinho's taken over Fernandino as one of the best defensive midfielders in the league right now. And that's responses. Okay. Let me come back here. Let me. You're miss something. You're missing out some stuff. This guy, for the listeners, this guy coach, yeah, he said, if you would have Fred, was it Fred? Yeah, I said. Oh, bring it back. He said Fred or Fabinho. This guy said Fred. Kai! You know you're just Said, wrong and strong. Wrong well, you're, and strong and you don't really just like I, like I said before. Everyone could yeah, do the knee. Been. Everyone could do the knee jerk reaction stuff. When I'm talk, when I'm talking about having a DM, I need my DM type energy. I've seen. Ah! I've seen. Listen, listen, people. Fred has people listen, no, people. No, Fred, has Fred has a, a lot too much energy. Fred, energy. Fred has too much no, energy. Listen, energy. Listen, no, Fred has energy. Are you gonna let me but explain yeah, my comment. I'm gonna explain. Go my, I'm gonna explain my opinion. Okay. When I have a DM, I want my DM to have energy. That's number one. Yeah. What people don't understand about what people don't understand about football when it comes to Fabinho, mm. the reason why Fabinho looks so good is because the five in front of him press so high mm-hmm. that the ball doesn't even get to him. You realize every time the ball gets to Fabinho, he's in possession of the ball. He's never ever pressing going to win the ball because the five in front of him, the front three and the two either side of him, the Hendersons and the Wijnaldum, Wijnaldum yeah. they win the ball up so high that you don't even see the deficiencies in Fabinho. Yeah, a lot of people don't see... What's the, the deficiencies? Defic- I'm talking about deficiencies like off the ball. You can run at Rubinho. I mean, Fabinho. You can run at him. You can turn him. He's not got that pace in the middle. He hasn't got that energy in the middle. But the ball never, ever reaches him because the front five works so hard. Does Busquets have pace? Huh? Does Busquets have pace? Of course he doesn't have pace, but guess what? But guess what? He never gets exposed like that. You know why? Because the front five, especially when Pep had him, yeah, the front three of Barca mm-hmm. and um, Xavi and Iniesta, they press the spaces so much that the ball never gets to Busquets. So they saved Every time him. Busquets Wait, gets yeah. the ball, you always see Busquets in possession. So you never d- see Busquets actually pressing the ball and winning the I ball. I get that, but does that mean that they saved him that he hasn't got the ability? Just because... 
the course system. He, of course, listen. Of course, he doesn't have the. Of course, he doesn't have the ability to do that. That's why you got the front five to no, do no, the no, pressing. I'm saying because you're saying they've covered Busquets like in the past. Those teams. Are you trying to say Busquets doesn't have the ability then as a DM? No, because he's not athletic like that to be pressing like these guys. This is what I'm oh, trying. Busquets is one of the best DMs in the no, world. Why see, would why would they say this Busquets is one of the best DMs in the world? The reason why they'll say he's one of the best DMs in the world is because what he does on the ball, not off the ball. So for being not on the ball, he just scored a banger. He's not a midfield. This, oh, this is what I'm trying to say. No, let me finish. He, you guys are just you, you look at listen when you look when you saw Fabinho on the ball. He was on the ball. He was in possession and he scored that goal. But that's all. That's all come from the front three, the front five in front of him. At the end of the day, that's where it's come from. When a lot of Liverpool's play, they don't wait for the ball to get to Fabinho. He's our DM and he's got a break up play. No, he doesn't break up play. It's the front five that breaks up play. We win possession. The ball got re- the ball recycles back to Fabinho and he can play what he's good at, which is dictating play. When you're talking about in possession, yes, Fabinho is very good. That's his game. But when you're talking about a DM out of position, he's going to break up play. That's what I'm talking about. So when you guys are talking about, oh, right now, Fred and Fabinho, who would you take? Oh, my days, coaches chatting rubbish. What I'm talking about is if I have a DM... You just prefer your DM to energy. have energy. I just, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying me personally. Yeah, you copped out, bro. Let me, let me, I'll let this guy speak. Fam, listeners, did you hear the jargon yeah, yeah. and rubbish? Copped out there, he copped out. Fam! Because, because he, tend, he changed it to, the, I prefer my DM to have yeah, energy. Bro, bro, it's, like, it's not football about opinion. You're going to say, you're going to say, you're going to say stuff that I don't like. You bust kids, you bust kids. Listen, it's an opinion thing for sure, but some opinions are wild and crazy. Yeah, Fred's not better than for, for being right now. No, 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 I think they both don't play. They both don't play. But to say that you take Fred Fred. over Fabinho, whatever energy you think someone's going to come with. You're just looking at both teams. Fam, all this Senzu being energy, fam. I don't know what. You're just looking at the two teams. Man United United are not playing well. The the midfield is not saying that. But all of a sudden, but all of a sudden, this is what I'm saying. Why why are people talking so highly of Liverpool's midfield? Is it because of the individual midfield? I see what Coach is saying. No, I see what Coach is saying. I see what Coach is saying. The the system they're playing, you know. Right right now, if we was to build a team or whatever, no one's telling me they're taking Wijnaldum. No one's telling me they're taking yeah, Fabinho, yeah, yeah. and no one's telling me they're taking Henderson or Milner. But the trio itself, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're they, it they're such a well-oiled yeah, 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 yeah. machine yeah, yeah. that it it makes all of them as individuals look better than they are. Everyone knows their role. Yeah, this yeah, is what yeah. I'm saying. Okay. And that I fully agree with. Like they work in tandem, their their intensity together yeah. as a as a midfield is spot on. They move right? as a unit. Yeah. But that's not what what we're fucking asking you, G. If you had a choice of Fred or Fabinho, you're telling me you'd pick Fred. You asked me, I said yes. Oh, fine, 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 fine. Cool. Fine, fine, uh, fine. Guys, what does this mean now? Nine points clear from City, eight points from second place Leicester. Is the title done or do we still feel that maybe City can get back in it? Because in the studio, shout out Vincent Company and them man there, it was a very in, um, interesting debate they had. You know, Marino said his team's in the past, if his team's the best in the league and they go kind of eight points clear or nine points clear, it's yeah. goodbye. Yeah. yeah? But then company also came back with a good point saying this Liverpool side is, is good, but this Liverpool side is not going to play every game from now to the end of the season. There's a lot of games. Mm. So when a player comes out and the balance changes, can they keep it up? Um, boy, we discussed this between the three of us like mid-game and we said basically if Liverpool can get over this Christmas period with a, a solid gap, let's mm. say six to seven points, it's a wrap. Like it's if they can get over this Christmas period. For How me, many points clear were they at Christmas? Because they were top of the league at Christmas. Were they? Yeah, yeah, yeah they were. But I'm, I can't remember how much points it was. It was but it was five going into the I think the Leicester game before they drew. Because I think City lost the the day before that. Mm-hmm. They could have stretched it to eight. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. ended up drawing or yeah, something yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah. the next day. So. Boy, I think this year, obviously coming so close. Like I said, Liverpool are charged, but it seems like they're extra charged. And they've got that motivation. Like, guys, mm. we were one point off last season. This season, let's just do it. Like, you get me? If they get over the Christmas period with a sustainable gap, I think they'll do it. But in saying that, I want to see how they deal with a couple injuries. So, for example, a Van Dijk or an Anamane at one time for a couple, three, let's say that two to three games, how they deal with that. Because when they had... um. Uh, the keeper, um, Alison, injured. 
Obviously, the replacement football was a bit shaky. No, goals. but they didn't drop points though. They didn't drop points, but goals are flying in. Were well, they not? The goals are flying in. Yeah. But they had enough, like, they had enough of the defense to to still push through and their attack. Yeah. Help them push through. But I want to see if they can they can withstand a couple injuries and see how they get on. Hmm. But saying that City has to not drop points too. It's not even just City now. It's Leicester as well. Leicester yeah, we'll and get on to Leicester. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, coach, like I said, company said Liverpool have a very good team and they might be the best side right now on form, but City still have the best squad in terms of players can still come in. We've seen players come at the team and the replacement that comes in, you know, they still get these victories. What do you think about this title race now? Nine yeah, points. Listen, it's still early. You want to be nine points ahead instead of nine points behind. Sure. Um, that's for sure at this stage of the season. Indo is early. Um, company, obviously, I'm sure half of him is talking with his heart as well as a City through and through guy. Yeah. And obviously half is maybe chatting with his head at the end because they've been there and they've seen this at the end of the day. So he's been through so many title charges behind, in front. So to him... He's got to keep that sort of level head, even though he's a pundit for today. He's got to keep that sort of level head. If he do, if he came on the studio and started panicking and oh my days is over, it's this, it's that. That kind of even feeds into City as well. So that's why I think he's come with the level head as a City guy in his chest. He's come with a City heart. His heart's blue. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's where, as much as he's a pundit for today, he's still a City player. Do you get what I'm saying? And he's been through this. He's been in that dressing room. So he knows what he's talking about. But like I said, you'd rather be nine points ahead than mm. nine points behind right now. Yeah, man. It's, for me, it's a statement victory as well. Like, they could have lost today, Liverpool, and the gap would have been, what? Six. Uh, three. Yeah, three points. Yeah. But they said, nah, F that. We're extending this. And it's a big, for them, it's a big victory. Like, you could even see in the City players, they were getting angry. Sterling... As much as he was on it today, you could see he was frustrated. Like all of the players seemed to like raw. Like this Liverpool team, they're not going away. Like mm-hmm. to me, it looked like like Liverpool are sucking this pause. They're sucking this um, winning, winning. Like we're the best winning mentality yeah, yeah, out yeah, of City, yeah. and it's transforming to Liverpool. The shift now. the momentum, it's basically. Yeah, like, yeah, it looks like it's shifting. Like Liverpool are like what? We're we're in charge now. Mm. It's us now. You get me? You, you used to, like, I've had your time now. Power is shifting to us. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Um, yeah, man. Like you said, Sterling, he had a solid game in terms of individually. I think he was very intense and he, he was trying to make things happen. Yeah. Came out this week that Real Madrid, I don't know if it's, it wasn't official, it was rumours, but it's always rumors. It, obviously um, they were saying Real Madrid are preparing a bid of 70 million plus Gareth Bill for Sterling. Now, first of all, would you, as Sterling, move or make that move and try and challenge yourself? You've won titles at City. Second of all, does that not show how high of a level Sterling is playing right now for Real Madrid to come calling? You know me, boy. I'm a Sterling fan, so for me, it's not it's not surprising um, Real Madrid will come after him. I think he should go. Um, I think, listen, that's that's the pinnacle, isn't it? Real Madrid at the end of the day it's the pinnacle can you deal with the fans can you deal with the expectations all that sort of stuff can he deal with it plus you're getting paid good money as well me personally I think the story's been put out there by his agent his agent wants him to be the highest paid player at City because of his form and that's what you do as an agent you've got to cash in because you don't know this, this you know what I'm saying class is permanent but form is temporary do you know what I'm saying right now he's in red hot form as in like he's City's main guy they, du- they doubled up what did we say today yeah. about Money was doing miles today yeah. Doubling up on on Sterling because they've keyed in yeah. on yo. As much as people talk about this boo, is like he is the guy we need to keep. If we stop Sterling, mm-hmm. we can kind of neutralize Bernardo Silva because he's always going to cut in anyway. Yeah. So we've always got a centre midfield. They were more focused back. on Sterling than KDB today. Yes, yes. but you got know what I'm saying because he knows he's the one that penetrates at yeah. the end of the day. The back four, those little cute ones that he makes, the little one twos and stuff. They know they need to stop that. If you can stop that right now, City, that's their supply line. It's not like on the other side you got Sane. That you got to deal with as well. That's that's different. Hey, Every everybody. Oh God, my brother. Forgetting about Sonny. That's, that's what that's company's saying though. Guys are gonna. It's a long season. When Sonny comes back, if he hits form. Too late by then though. That's yeah, thing. It could be too late. Yeah, like yeah. when I think of it, yeah. City have had. They've got two. That's two. The Port and, the Port and, and Sonny. Man. Massive, massive. Man, that's like Salah and Van Dijk yeah, going at. Yeah. Massive injuries. Massive injuries that they've had to deal with. So. Yeah. But back to Sterling though, like, um, yeah, what were you saying? No, just for me, I just think that if if it's if it's true, the rumors and stuff, I think his agents put it out there. I think if City come with making him the highest paid player, mm. I think he will stay. Um, but if Real Madrid are serious about getting him, they know, 
listen, if they don't get him this summer, they're going to have to put a lot of money down. Is Sterling going to be worth it for that for them? Have they really ever played for an English player like that? Yes, Bale, British player at the time, but they've seen how the Bale experiments worked. Yeah, obviously we've won the three, four Champions Leagues or whatever, but Bell has kind of stifled that. It's hard to get him out of the club and all that. So, but for me, if there's a chance for him to go to Real Madrid, I think you should go. Just go and test yourself. Uh, that's that's how, how, how like, I, like I asked earlier, how much of a testament to it to Sterling mm. right now is it that Real Madrid are coming calling? Yeah, it's obviously it's a massive testament. Real Madrid only look at the best. And well, they're look- not looking at Rashford. <laughs> what are you saying? No, no, go, 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 no, no, go, go, go. What did you say? What, Romeo, you're not looking at Rashford? Yeah, he's trying oh, yeah. Let's not go into that one. Yeah. It's a massive testament, obviously, to Sterling that Romeo, are looking at him, and if it's right, they're looking at him to get him. But for me, I wouldn't go. Let me blast my reasons now. Romeo, right now, it's not looking sweet over there. It's not looking rosy. It's looking bad. It's looking real bad. It's looking like the season yeah. after Fergie it's left. Looking- Fam, it's looking Are like you sure? no, no, no. It's bro. It's not looking rosy. Like it's not looking sweet. But no one in La Liga is looking rosy okay, right now. God yeah, damn it! Obviously, they're at the top. It's but I, it's not looking rosy like how it was rosy and sweet when Ronaldo was there, right? I wouldn't for Rashford now. Sterling. Sorry, uh, Sterling. I wouldn't. I'll stay at City for as long as Pep is there for one, because he's played a he's played a massive role in his development and um, where he's at today, right? Cool. The table is a table. Fine. I'm not. It's not. Uh, so currently in the league, uh, Barcelona twenty five points, no, no, no. Real Madrid twenty five points, Atletico one point behind. The team. Look at the team. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not look. It's not like. I get you. I know what you mean. It's not flowing. There's yeah, like there's... two three seasons ago. Like they've got. You've got an aging Modric, uh, kind of aging Cruz. Benzema's thirty plus. Ronaldo's getting older, but he's still doing it. Ronaldo. No. Are you talking about three years ago? No, I'm talking about now. Oh, now. Okay, now. Okay. Now. Obviously, I'm saying. So. Sterling will go into that team and... They'll start looking at him. Yeah. like I don't feel like Sterling can go there and be the main man. But like, Hazard's there though. He doesn't need to. Bro, that's what I'm saying. I think he needs to. I, yeah, think, I, think they need, I think they need fresh blood there. They got, they've got already got Hazard. They bought Vinicius yeah. and they bought Rodrigo. Yeah. So that's their three, their three players that they're trying to come up on. And they'll try and put Hazard as that point of... And trying to get Pogba. Experience yeah, they'll try and get okay, Pogba fine. as well. No. Listen, if I, okay, let me let me ask you. Wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you. If you if you're studying and you saw yeah, Ramadan have just signed Pogba, blah blah blah. Okay. Then they come up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. That brings you to my. F- if players start flowing in, when I say players, the Pogba, Mbappe, I'm going to Real Madrid. Hundred percent. Because then then it's visibly clear that okay, cool. They're building a super team. Let me go and be involved in the super team and see what. what Don't you want to challenge yourself or? What? You what? Challenge yourself? You know the expectation of yeah, Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah, Listen, mad. three bad games. Them white handkerchiefs are at yo. Get him out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a different sort of pressure over there. Yeah, I mean, if he wanted to challenge himself, okay, then go. But it's not looking like at the moment. I'm fine where I am. It's I'm in a team where we're going for the Champions League. We're going for the league. Obviously, I'm in a. A solid team. I've got a solid manager. I'm the focal point, basically. Yeah, yeah. Going to Real Madrid is right now. If without our other signing is happening, it's not looking like the best move. Like, for, like Hazard, he's experiencing that right now. Cool he's that. gone there. I don't know. Never, I called that. Yeah, I called that one. But Hazard was never top tier. I called this. Oh, but okay. I said this. What I'm nope. I Hazard was saying was, that Hazard was never ever top tier elaborate, like elaborate. like in terms of like <laughs> he was never the Messi's the Ronaldo's the, he was okay. never a game changer like that it's just that at Chelsea he was the main man through and he has the years. ability and he has okay, the ability but so but for me and t- me in terms yeah. of Sterling we have to also like I said there's so many factors yeah. on we're, we're talking about the football side yeah. but it's also the factor of living in Spain you're 24 25 years old going into your prime yeah. you probably get a four or five year contract going to live in Spain then also um you've got the whole thing of listen he, is is he so mad to think that he can go for the Ballon d'Or one day? I don't know how. Real Madrid, I, I, it's I easy to get Ballon d'Or. I don't know how Sterling thinks as a person. Okay. So to him, it might be like, "Yo, this is my challenge to do this." Okay. Like it might not be the right move on paper, but for him personally, he's like, "Yo, I want to go." Because what's the worst that could going to happen to Sterling? Gareth Bale, what's happening to him? That, you know, your man is saying I don't want him. But with Sterling, he will just come back to the Prem. That's what he will do. You just come back to the Prem. He won't make it as difficult as... Because yeah. Bale, Bale's family want to stay in Spain. Mm. They do not want to leave that... They don't want to leave that lifestyle to come and live in Manchester. Sterling would just head back. If you're not working out, he would just head back. He's already been living in Manchester mm. for how long? Do you know what I'm saying? But maybe a change of scenery, hot weather. You don't know what these, how these boys are thinking. Yeah. But I personally think that if City come with the bag, 
yeah, to make him the highest paid player at the club, he will sign a new deal. And that's why his agent has put out this story about Real Madrid are looking at him. Uh, the agent's already been speaking to the, um, Real Madrid and all that. I think the agent has put out the story. That's what I think. I'm what's so good about Real Madrid anyway? I don't know. This is... This is nah, I mean, historically, it's, it's, it's not, prestigious. Yeah, like, in Europe, you want to... Yes. Listen, but I get what you're saying, though. Yeah. I never ever see... But I just think it's that Spanish way of... Li- that's what I think. Um, I think it's, I think if they had the same weather as it is in here, mm-hmm. I don't think it'd be that prestigious. But going over there... Having that villa, living that life, going to train. Nah, globally, Real Madrid is one of the best, one, yeah, of, the one of the biggest clubs biggest, in the world. One of the so, biggest clubs in the world. But right now, you got to look at their team, man. Just look at their team. It's not. Yeah. It's not special. They've got, they've got a rebuilding to do. Like, yeah, definitely. They're, they're, if they start rebuilding and they want to include Sterling in that rebuilding team, i.e. Mbappe, Pogba, Sterling, couple, yeah, couple yeah, defenders. That's why I, I think is is they're getting Mbappe. Or Sterling, it will be one of those two. In a four, yeah, think of it like this, yeah. They're gonna shot so many players. They'll get rid of Bale. They'll get rid of this Hamez that they tried. Modric. They'll get rid of so many players that they will allow. Well, we for them. Guys, how are you gonna buy these man? Yeah, no, high, high wages. Hard, yeah. Look, how, look how hard it is. To get, Bale was on six hundred a week. Who's gonna pay him that? Yeah. And he's got what three years left on his deal. Who's gonna pay him that? Yeah. It's an awesome situation. But <laughs> yeah. um, uh, um, Man United. Did you catch the Man United game? Man United beat Bournemouth, uh, Bournemouth, Brighton, three one, at home. Yeah. Yo, cut the run for Samuel, man. He's been getting way what too. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> Get out of here, man. Ronaldo at Real Madrid now. Nah. That Ronaldo one, I thought he, I thought he said three years ago. But um, yeah, so Brighton, three one. Those are the games over the past couple of weeks and months in recent memory. Basically, yeah. these are the games that United just seem to fumble on. Yeah. You know, professional three one performance. Yeah. What do you reckon? Well, what shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out. Okay, go on. What's professional about 3-1? What are you talking about? Professional meaning, just you just get the three points. Oh, yeah, just oh, get, oh, that, oh, get rid of that oh, game. Okay. Yeah. I say you, you replied with a goal straight after they scored. So, yeah, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah, so... um. Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to Tabs and is it Badger and those guys in the yeah, group yeah, and yeah. that? Oli out, innit? Yeah. Like, that's, that's what I've got to say first. Um, For me, it was just a routine win at the end of the day. We had chances to make it 4-5. Um, Brighton did make it a little bit of a game at 2-1 um, poor goal again all this zonal marking I'm not interested in zonal marking it just passes on responsibility to whoever everyone's just looking at each other is that your space my space it was just silly but in terms of United it was just a routine victory it's nothing this is what this is where we have to get good at these sort of things to become a good squad exactly. is to get at home Brighton's routine Crystal Palace is routine make them look like Brighton make, make, make them look yes. like Crystal Palace that's, don't that's make them thing. hard 5kg that's matches that's thing so next week whoever we play obviously he's not a top Sheffield United away okay Sheffield United then we go and wet the bed against Sheffield United <laughs> do you get <laughs> what I'm saying <laughs> no but this one <laughs> but this is what I'm saying yeah that, I can feel it we're gonna bed. because wet Sheffield United this yeah, season yeah. have been solid yeah. undercover yeah. they've been solid at home as well home as well this is what I'm saying after international break we them guys there, Sheffield United, don't play international football. There's no internationals in they that team. Rest for the next two weeks and just come and out. Train, crazy. you know, they're gonna they're gonna plan we for United. We have to wait for our players to come back. Who's injured? Who's on the red light, the amber light, the green? We don't know. And then we're going to their home ground. So with us, we haven't got the consistency of playing the Brightons, the Sheffield United, and just putting them away. So, but today I'm just happy that we just put them away. It was nothing big. Do you know what I'm saying? It was nothing big today. There was no. It was yeah. It was just routine. Three one. Cool. We just move on. That's it. Rashford, um, oh. you you in the group you were you were onto him. Yeah. I want to know though, yeah. Why do you always get onto Rashford when he does something wrong? But then when he does something good, you don't you don't you, you don't because, say nothing. There's no homage, nothing. I, but I tell you why, because I just love players who can do the simple things consistently. That's what I like. I don't like the overblown stuff of Rashford hit it top bins. Rashford Rich Rashford done a flip flap, this that and the other. He it was a wonderful skill that he did today. Wonderful skill that for his was, legs. That was like a Ronaldinho type yeah. of thing. Where cool, but he then he missed the open goal. This this what? my this, oh, this oh, is my yeah, thing. Okay. But yeah. this is my thing about Rashford. And then he'll get overblown, and then no one, nobody in the media now will pull him up on the simple stuff. The only person that pulls him up and does it subtly is Oli. Yeah, Oli. Oli pulls he, yeah. him up like, yo, you want to be a top forward, yeah? You need to tuck more of your left. You need to tuck those open goals. I mean, that's what's going to make you consistent. Yeah. And then that's when everyone says, okay, you do the basics things so well, now we're concentrating on your worldies. Now we're concentrating on your flip-flaps. Me, when I see the flip-flap and then I see you missed the open goal today, right. it just shows me the inconsistency in him. He's it, Listen, when he doesn't have to think, it's going top corner. It's just going top corner. It's just when he has to think that like the ball's coming across, oh, open goal, open goal, open goal, open goal, miss. 
It's just stuff like that with Rashford that makes me so... So he needs to get used to tucking those things away, doing the easy things consistently. Only did say, you know, Rashford, he scores a lot of world-class goals, but he needs to know how to score the ugly goals. Um, he gets he, 10 or 15 more if he, he does that. To. Yeah, ollie has been, been bigging up Greenwood, hiding, hiding Rashford. Like He's saying, yeah, within a few years, Rashford's, I mean, uh, Greenwood's going to be a better finisher than Rashford. I think that's quite disrespectful. I don't think it's disrespectful what? at all. I think I, all I, of I, us I, fans... Even, facts, they, even though it could be facts, yeah, it's rude, fam. Like, no, oh, no, but, no, no, no. You no, never no. see it as rude or see it as a challenge. Oh, yeah, yeah. you think he's going to be a better finisher than me, yeah? Okay, Oli. That's, what, Ollie that's what he's trying to lie. Maybe, because this is what I'm saying. He's not lying, though. What I'm saying, you could have had, you could have had, you could have put your arm around him at training. You could have had talks with him. You could have had this, and it's not working. Okay, let me like, yo, Greenwood's going to be our our guy moving forward. What? I'm only 22. Yeah. I just turned 22. Mm. And you're saying that, yo, I've got another good eight. Oh? Yeah, Greenwood on Thursday, it. yeah. The way And I was saying that and I got laughed at the room several times when I said Greenwood reminds me of Van Persie. Of course he does. In the way he plays. The way he Even the goal, he, the goal he scored on Thursday, if that's Rashford and the ball's coming to him, Rashford's going to just lace it as, as hard as he can. Greenwood took a touch, dropped the shoulder, and then drop, and then wrong-footed the keeper and put it the other way. So I'd, I'd, Oli might not be lying with he's that. Def- he's definitely more like Van Persie, like just Van Persie with pace, but obviously not on Van Persie's level. Like, mm-hmm. so he's not, let's not get wild with it. It's just the way he moves. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, not, he's very like languid and he's got that bone-legged sort of structure that Van Persie had and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That's why people say he's more like Van Persie, but he's got a lot to learn. Both. He used both. He's both footed, bro. Pre- predominantly, he uses the left, but he can use both. It's like Fred. Mm-hmm. Fred's left footed, but he can use both. Basically, Nani was right footed, but he can use both. Mm-hmm. Like those sort of players. I wouldn't. Do I don't know. About, I just got, right-footed. You completely <laughs> ruined it. You completely ruined it by mentioning Fred. Please, coach, leave said. Fred alone. Yeah, this guy is not it. Oh, no, wait, let's talk about Fred. No, let's. Listen, we just, just listen. We listen. We're just talking about what foot guys yeah, are. Yeah, we're not right. talking about. No, no, no. I'm talking about Fred today, actually, because Fred actually played well. And he's been getting a run of games now. And I'm not saying he's the best or yeah, yeah, yeah. he's 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 so one of the United. Saying I'm saying mm-hmm. with the way he started last season, he he was terrible. Like until I was like, why, yeah. who? Why? Why do you buy this? Yeah, why yeah. was City looking for this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, yeah. I know why City was. Can you can you imagine him in that City system though? In that DM role, this is what I'm trying to say. Where guys don't get yes United. Listen, Fred is not supposed to be someone's main midfielder. He was not going to City to be their main midfielder. It just so happens with our midfield and our recruitment over the past years and with injuries and stuff, he's our main midfielder right now. Mm. He is our main midfielder. So all the spotlights on him. Fred, what are you going to do for us? Are you going to play those through balls? Are you going to win the tackle? Are you going to, sp- are you going to spread the play? He's not a player like that. He just does his job, but he needs two other guys around him to be... He needs a Pogba. Then he needs another workhorse around him to make him look good. Do you get what I'm saying at the end of the day? He just does his job. But right now, he's our main central midfielder. Mm. And the spotlight's on him. So we expected him sometimes to do stuff that is not his game at the end of the day. Fair enough. Um, What would you say about, you know... What would you say now to the fans and non-fans that are saying Oli's not the main man, he's not going to take United any further because we've got one sitting here Dots has oh, said in the past I number, one, number one I don't want to hear from no Arsenal fans that's that's number one oh. yeah no 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 no, no 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 we're going to have a discussion for what I'm just saying like mm. they've got their own issues yeah with me like I said I'm cool with Oli because Oli understands the project that needs to be done it's going to be baby steps and we're going to get there I'm going to look at him at his next transfer window then we'll look at him in the summer again that's when I'm going to really judge what Oli Solskjaer is about. He ain't mm. even been at the club for a year. Mm-hmm. And guys don't even guys don't even clock that. Mm-hmm. United fans talking about, oh, he's not the guy. He, clock, rah, rah. he ain't even been there for a year, people. A year. When did he take over Jose? December. Mm-hmm. Yeah? He ain't even been here a year. And people are calling for his head. Dumb football fans. A lot of United fans. Dumb. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day. Let him work and let's see where he gets. Mm-hmm. Simple. Yeah, boy. To an extent, I would agree with that. He hasn't been there a year. Unlike other managers... <laughs> You get me, and we'll get onto that yeah. if you want to segue. Samo, segue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get me. So, like I was saying with Ole, let's just see at the end of the season. For me, I'm not a United fan, but United fans need to be looking at a style of play and you need to be looking at people that he's going to sign. You need to be, sign, sign. yeah, you need to see like, who's going to sign and just a style of play because, like you said, you've won today, yeah, cool, 3 1 routine, but 
in two weeks' time, you can wet the bed, like you said. And it's happened. It's happening this season. You've had a good few good results. Yeah, Liverpool. I saw it. I saw it. Let me finish. I saw it. Oh, we've turned the t- we've turned the corner. Yeah, Ole's at the wall. Boom, boom, boom. We're, we're speeding around the corner. Well, I saw it. Yeah, a lot of fans after Liverpool. I saw it. Oh yeah, we turned the corner. This how we- even Ole was saying it. Yeah, this is the main night way. Yeah, then you went and lost. Okay, so but you, does, so okay, in, okay. You need, to, I need, you need to see consistency now. Mm-hmm. I need to judge him at the end of the season, obviously. Mm-hmm. I need to judge judge him after that, like, like the chance winner and see what he does. Yeah, but Dots, obviously, like you just said, they might wet the bed. Yeah, is it fair to say though, Oli's only brought in three players? So a lot of these players that he's playing with, play that he's he, he might even, he might even be saying, oh yeah, you know, this guy's a good player. Yeah. He probably in the back of his mind was telling Carrick, yeah, he's out yeah, soon. Yeah, fine. So yeah. I mean, I, I mean look, look at his yeah. first three signings, yeah, yeah. and, and that's why I said I understand yeah. that, like. Give him time. Anyone that's saying Oli out as a United fan, dumb. Like you said, Oli should go. You said he's not the man. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 true, true. You said he should go. You know, I'm saying that as banner. I'm saying that to, to rifle stifle guys. Yeah. If you're using sense, he hasn't been there a year. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, you can't say he's not the right. Like for me, as a football fan, I'll say he's not the right guy. But you have to give him time. Mm-hmm. United fans have to give him time. My thing is that he might not be the man for the future. Like in terms of tactically. Other than the Chelsea match the other day when he made some changes, that's the first time I've actually seen him make, you know, a couple changes Lampard mid-game. Again, you know, hmm? against Lampard again, yeah. boy wonder. Yeah, 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 that's been doing his thing. Which, yeah. to be fair, yeah. But when, obviously he did that, but then, you know, I haven't seen him kind of do things tactically that I'm like, yeah, we're going to go for, you know, championships and, you know, premiership. I just, I just really like the fact that all he's got the team, what he said importantly the other day is that he's getting the characters in the squad right as in like they want to be at United they want to work hard they want to go and win that ball and, and stuff like that like I like that and I can, I can, I can tell that from his free signings they've just been low key that culture why, of, why, that, why, that culture of give me the money and yeah. I'll just do bare minimum right. and let the manager sit there that's what gone I'm, what I'm saying is that I like to see Maguire with the, with the captain's arm like he was today yeah, he's our defender. He's our solid defender out there, our number one defender. He gets the captaincy. Simple. Just keep it funky like that. Right. Wamba Saka does his job on the low. James does his work on the low. Mm-hmm. Because it's always, to them, when I see them, I always look at Man United before the names on their back of their shirt. Mm-hmm. I always look at their badge in front before. Whereas I think, I think previous years, a lot of us have been looking at the names at the back 100%. and forgetting what's at the front. Mm-hmm. And I think those three players that have come in have epitomised the whole social taking it back to your... Think about what's at the front, mm-hmm. because if you think about what's at the front, you will shine at the back. Yeah. What the name at the back? Will coach is killing it with these one liners. Okay, bro. cool. All these one liners are funky and good on paper. What's the goal at the end of the season? What's at the end of this season, what's the goal? It's a clear question. What's the Obviously, goal? he's gonna tell you top four. Me personally, I don't want us in Europe. I don't want us in Europe. Me Why? personally, I don't want us in Europe. I want, I, I want us to focus on the league solely next season. I think Europe. Oh, listen, listen. I think if we go to Europa, we're only going to do the um, Thursday and Sunday thing, which don't help us. Mm. Then if you go Champions League, we're nowhere near ready for all of that. So realistically, Champions League for the banter of the fans mm. to not get bantered on Thursday nights. Okay, that's number one. Yeah. And number two is to line up the Glazers' pockets. That's what it is. Yeah, but in terms of recruitment, is that not a big no, blow? No, listen, recruitment, no. Trust me, this day and age with players and all that sort of stuff, if you give them a project that you know that they're going to be a part of at the end of the day, they will come. Aubameyang yeah, hasn't okay, signed. Okay, Aubameyang hasn't ask, signed at Arsenal well, because well, Aubameyang hasn't signed at Arsenal because because he doesn't think they're going to get top okay, four so yet. Go but he didn't answer my question. So, in other words, the aim for you is to finish seventh or eighth. No, you ask, that, that's me. The Man United's that's aim. Man United's aim is to win this top four. Cup, a cup, a, a cup as well. Yeah. They're always okay, so top four. Top four. You coach, you want seven for eighth and a cup. I'll take that. <laughs> I'm, saying, that? I'm saying, I'm no! saying, what's, what's that picture no, where no, the no, guy's smiling? I just said, I don't I'm not taking. What do you want? I just said that. Okay, you know. Out of Europe, I don't want to be seven, in Europe. Okay, so equal, that, you just said that equates to seven for eighth. It could be 14th for like, okay, okay, I don't okay, care. Okay, fine. Okay, we're out of Europe. So, and if so, we get and we, and we win a trophy, cool. Okay, fine. So to get to 14th, you have to lose games. Gee, you have yeah, to get prepared. Co- Bro, you know, this not, season, Coach has been prepared. Like, when we lose, Coach not even. I'm not even angry. Listen, if we wet the bed at Sheffield United, I'm not going to be angry. I know what this squad is. And it's an inconsistent squad. The only problem with that when you come 44 like, and you're saying you might be losing a lot of games is the whole social media fast no, social going out. Okay, it's not just social that. It's go not out. Just that because 
fam, you think the team are going to be, yeah, we're ready to, we're ready to turn it for the title next season after they've come no. 14th? It happened, happened, it happened, Chelsea. Listen, Cho- listen, when Chelsea came listen. 14th and Conte came, they won the league the next listen, season. Listen, listen. No, because when Marino came and then, and then they were out of Europe and then whoever took over. Exactly. Bro, this is what yeah. I'm trying to, listen, the out of Bro, Europe. Football's the, not as, as easy. It's not, listen, oh, let's just, let's nah, I don't, I'm not with coach. I want want top four. But hear what I'm saying. When I talk about out of Europe, if we, if we look at the team, if we look, it's not happening, if but we look at the teams that have been out of Europe, there's a trend going on for of the last course. four, five, six years that when you're out of Europe and you're solely focusing on the league, Liverpool yeah, did it under the Rodgers and then me, even, Chelsea. To me, it even makes the players even more hungry yeah. because when you know you can only got really one competition to play for. And you train every this week. In, in a week, you're training for the formation. You're doing... I, I remember vividly when Conte came with that whole 3-4-3 three, three, and everyone was like, what formation is this? <laughs> they had the whole week, every week yeah, to, every to, work to, to work on that. Guys, but anyway, now, now, let's move on. Em, 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 Rainey, em Rainey. Segway! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, listen, listen, listen. Um, Arsenal, man. Yeah. Arsenal lost. <laughs> Arsenal lost. <laughs> <laughs> no, alright, cool. Before the game, yeah, I mean, what do you think about this coach, yeah, about fans that are Obviously, what you just said about you don't want United to get top four, that you had reasons, but what do you think about Arsenal fans before the Leicester game saying, I hope we get pumped, you know, we get we lose, and like a lot of, obviously, because shout, shout. Say, them, tell, say why they said it. Oh, yeah, exactly. A, a lot of Arsenal fans wanted Arsenal to lose against Leicester because they wanted Emery to get sacked. What do you think about that, first of all, before we touch on that, before we touch on Arsenal? I think, I think it's, just, it's just stupid because at the end of the day, the, the board are not, as much as, um, Arsenal fans criticise the board they're not silly as well they know what's go- they see what's going on now is it for them right now have they once again the board could have been saying themselves right now Emery's gone yeah. we need to find this replacement right yeah. now this replacement ain't going to come next week the yeah. two weeks later. Yeah. it might be a manager that they really want saying listen I ain't trying to come in there mid-season yeah, yeah? let him do his season yeah. bust out and then I'll come in in the summer yeah. this is the talks that happen in the background the board ain't going to keep coming out every week and say Arsenal fans uh, we're talking to a new, new manager and we're trying to do you get what I'm saying like, Arsenal fans just need to just for me once again they just need to ride out the season just ride out the okay. season mm. at the end of the day cool so at the start of the season yeah the owners clearly categorically said the goal and aim is this season to get back into the Champions League which equals top four right mm. At the moment, it's clear, like everyone, that we're not going to get that top four. <laughs> no, no, no. I have, to, I have to speak clearly now so everyone hears. Well, at the moment, as, as things are going now, we're not getting that top four. Mm. With this guy, Emery, at the helm and managing and coaching his team, it's not going to happen. So as the board, right, if they've set up that goal clear mm. and they can see, because they go to these games, home and away. They were there, there yesterday. Edu, there. Edu and they're what's the other guy? Seleni, Raul. Yeah, they were there. They're there, right? You can see. There's discontent among the fans, the players. Nothing's even flowing. You can see it. It's clear. It's obvious, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to wait till the end of the season where we, where we can finish 6th, 7th, 8th, possibly. That's what it's looking like, right? And then say, oh, yeah, now we have to rebuild again. New manager. Another rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. Come on. Right now, let me finish. Right now, it's fixable. If you get this Emery out, people are, a lot of people have been saying, yeah, Bring this Arteta, Arteta Lundberg, all of that. Maybe people think this thing's like PE or it's something. It's not FIFA, bro. It's not PE, it's not FIFA. But if they say, cool, we'll clear out Emery and we'll put Lundberg as a caretaker coach, I feel like he'd be doing a better job. Because he's connected, he's coached the, the youth at a, a good level for a couple of seasons, right? Mm. And as petty and stupid as it sounds, he can communicate with the fucking players. Not with this man. Laka, Laka, this is it. I'm saying mm-hmm. all this shit that Emery does on the sidelines. He, mm. fam, all these rumors that come out. We know a few guys that talk to these players, mm. man to man. They don't understand what this idiot Emery is saying. <laughs> they don't understand what his instructions are. They don't understand, and it's clear to see on the pitch. Just go back to the, yesterday's game against Leicester. What was the formation? No, answer me, Samson. What was the formation? I said it was three, five, five, five three, two, or three. Okay. Wait, three, three, three five, four. Two, man. Huh? It was three, five, two. You had know, three, five, two. You had Holding, mm-hmm. you had Chambers, mm-hmm. and you had Louise at the back. Okay. And then your wing backs were Kalasinac mm-hmm. and um, Bellerin. Mm-hmm. The three in the middle was um, Gondolzi, yeah. um, Ozil, and uh, what's his name? Um, Torreira. Yeah. And you had your two up front. On, up front or on the wing? Okay. No, but you're, this okay, is what, this is where... Because... This, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so 3-5-2. 3-5-2. If he wants to say 3-5-2, 5-3-2, whatever. Cool. 
like I said, um, Aubameyang was on the on the, his boots on the chalk the whole match, right? His boots were on the chalk the whole match. Facts. I don't know what if that was instruction yeah. or what he was doing he out was there. Byline to the match. Nobody yeah. knew where they were meant to be. For goodness sake, mm. and I feel like that's instruction. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's instruction. So what's going on? You, you you got your two at the front, yeah. They're meant to be central for me. I'm not saying don't pull wide, but it looked like Laka was um, Aubameyang was playing on the wing. Mm-hmm. What's going on here? You guys, what dots? Sometimes what football fans forget, yeah. You always look at one way when you're when you're looking at football. You always look at attacking, 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 attacking. Okay. When you don't have the ball and you've got two man central and Ozil behind them, yeah. where you're gonna get so exposed on the wings, you're not even gonna get the ball in the middle. That's the whole thing. Why do you think he put Ozil in the middle and split the other two wide to wide? Because it's to stop Chilwell and Ricardo exposing because once again, they've been doing their thing moving forward. Mm. That you have to... Uh, listen, when you don't have the ball, as attackers in this day and age of football... Off the ball is very important. Off yeah. the ball is yeah, very cool, important. Cool. And Arsenal are very lazy from the front off the ball. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's you're just so quick to blame Emery that you don't oh. actually... No, this is what I'm saying. You don't yeah. actually look at your actual front line. Like I said, don't have to close quick in, quick yeah. enough. Abamyang don't know how to close. Too you, soft. Guys, you guys look at you guys look at Abamyang and Lacazette as strikers when you don't have the ball. That's the whole problem. You're still looking at them as strikers. Oh, why? Why are they going out wide? They're defenders. They're the first line of defense when you don't have the ball. But you still look at them as oh, they're the potent strikers. We have two world class. They're not strikers if they don't have the ball. If your team don't have possession of the ball and you can't win the ball back, you, you're you're not attackers. Okay, so what happens when we do get the ball? And they're out on the wings, which is what happened yesterday. They weren't out on the wings. They were out. They, they were I out was out watching the match. So, you know, listen, listen. If you, oh if listen, God, was if, 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 yeah, come on. I was, listen, but I was watching it as well. If you see their positions, yeah. Emre wanted them to pick up the ball between the two centre between the centre back and the full back. That's where they were. And but obviously, to Arsenal fans, it looks like because we're not right next to the centre backs. They're not playing central. Mm. He wanted to attack them between Chilwell and that Turkish defender and between Evans and um, Ricardo. That's where he wanted to penetrate. Whether you penetrate that well or not, obviously it did not work. Okay, fine. Yeah, it did not work. So if you said it did not work, I get that. But mm. this is why Emery, he's not chucking them out there as wingers. They're not wingers. But obviously Arsenal fans will look at it on an emotional thing that why are they out wide? Well, they should be central, closer together to each other and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you've also got Ozu in there as well. No, but when Ozu had the ball, a lot of the times he'll get out, he'll look up and there's, they're, no they're nowhere one. near him. First of all, first of all, Ozu missed so many runs that Abamia yeah, was yeah, making. Yeah, yeah that's, that's number one. He, when he was on the half turn, Abamia was making so many cute runs yeah, that Ozu was it. too slow. Fact. He missed it so Fact. much. Abamia actually played... But shout out to Didi, man. Didi was on him. Uh, yeah, Didi played well. But Abamia was actually cute with his runs because he was actually getting in between the, channel, yeah, the then, channels yeah, yeah. where Emery wanted to get to. But Ozu just weren't finding him quick enough. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But listen, I do, Dodds, I do yeah. get what you're saying in terms Fact. of Emery. They but, don't look like... Yeah. Like, like Arsenal fans are looking at you like you've had, oh, what's it, coming up to 18 months now for him? Yeah. yeah. yeah and we're not seeing yeah. any I sort of structure. A lot of things are not working, right? And I don't, I'm not a stat pad guy, but the stats are very damning after each match. It's always consistent. Teams against us, they flow. Bro, minimum 10. Minimum 10 shots on our goal, right? And now, now more recently, we're not even having shots anymore. Mm-hmm. I saw a disgusting... I almost wanted to vomit when I saw this stat. We had one touch in the opposition box. But do you know why? What's that? work hard off the ball. Fine, Your bro. team doesn't work hard Fine. off the ball. You see me, yeah? I'm on this chop and change thing now, bro. I'm sorry to say it. Mm-hmm. I'm, bruv, I'm on this chop and change. If the players clearly have down tools for this manager, which they clearly look like they have, let's get this guy out. It's, bro, I'm not on this... Oh, let's wait till the end of the seat. They've down tools already. So let's change him now. It's clear, bro. Like, we Nothing's what, 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 what Things are not know? working. But another issue with me, yeah? Cool. You have a formation. Stick with it. Mm, that's my so, issue. When you bro, start... Oh you see, yeah? God. Gary Neville oh. Gary Neville said when he went to... I know it was Gary Neville, but when he went to Spain, he said the moment that he started chopping and changing the uh, formations and the styles, he lost respect from the players straight away. Because... He it's came and he had a way of playing. Then he started doubting himself when he started, the results started, you know, wavering. Uh, started wavering. Then he started make, he started changing it. Bro. Then the players were like, bro, what are you doing? Listen, and I think that's what's happening. Other here. teams, i.e. like Chelsea, for example, Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool, they don't have to look at Sky Sports. They don't have to look at all these websites. What formation are we playing today, guys? Is it 3-5-2? Is it 5-3-2? Is it this and that? 
bro, I don't know what formation we're going to play after each match. The players, you can't, it's common sense. If the players are playing one formation this week, one formation next week, they only have what, three, four days really to work on a formation mm-hmm. per week, right? If they're one week, they're doing four, three, three, a couple of weeks, and the next week they're doing three, five, two, then it's five, three, two. Come on, mm. it's bait. It's, you don't even, you're not even sure of yourself, coach. Right, so let me, ask, let me ask you, Docs, then. So you're saying Lundberg to the uh, end of the season, yeah? Well, I'm not or, saying so, that. No, I'm, I'm, I'm you're, not saying, saying you're saying you wouldn't be mad. He'll be doing a better job than Emery. Yeah, yeah. But going forward, give me some names of who you think would be able to yeah, cool. take this team further. So Realistic ones, not ones that what's are... What's not realistic? Because Brendan Rodgers is not going to leave okay, Leicester right okay, now. Okay, cool. Get, okay, 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 I get you. So um, we've heard of the ex Allegri. We've heard of Allegri. Mm-hmm. Um, more recently, we've heard of... Um, De- Enrique, Luis Enrique. So those oh. are two options. Oh. Chill. Why do you say all oh, good? Chill. Let me finish. Oh, no. Those are the two options. There's other options out there. Like, come on, Arsenal is still a big club, mm. no matter what people think. There's options out there. There's one option that there's not an option for me is Jose. I don't want to hear that name. There's Luis Enrique. There's Allegri. Bro, even if you wanted to fling Arteta in, now that for me would should be Arsenal's number one. You reckon? Yes. Because I think a lot that? Of Arteta. Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of people underestimate Arteta yeah. because of how he was as a player. Yeah. But that doesn't that yeah, says yeah, right. nothing in the coaching world. Yeah, right, and right. Pep rates him. He does a lot of work for Pep. Everyone yeah. Pep gets the glory, yeah. but Arteta puts a lot of things in yeah. place, yeah. and that's why. But the only problem is dots. He was the second choice in the candidacy when I said before. Mm-hmm. Allegri was first. Arteta was second, Emery came up third. So that was the first, so that was the C, plan C. And what happened is, is that Arteta wanted control of transfers and all that sort of stuff. But at the time, you had Mislintat and them guys there mm-hmm. saying, no, nah, that's not the model we're going to go for. I'll give you the players. And you think, and obviously he's come from City, where he's, he's he works in day in, day out of a manager that picks his own players. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to leave that and go to a team. It's what I know now. It's yeah. what I know. And I know it works because they've been winning titles. Yeah. So I need to pick my own players, yeah. my own staff, recruitment staff and that to make sure that we get it done on the pitch. So I know we're going to battle with my players. Yeah. And I think that because Miss Lintat and those guys said, nah, that's not how it works at the time. He said, no, but they can possibly go. Why did he say no to Enrique? Or why, did, why were you laughing when Lloyd said um, um, Enrique? See, Enrique, no. Do you see these guys? They just last like two, three years. Yeah. When, it gets on, when it gets on top, They'll have a sabbatical and say, oh, my family's not happy in England. We don't mm. like it. And, uh, mm. yeah, yeah, but the thing is, like, the thing is why well, I'm not mad at Arteta, right? And everyone's, like Coach rightly said, people are thinking of Arteta as a player. Think of this guy as a coach. He's worked with Pep closely for, what, two, three seasons, right? What's the harm in this guy coming to extract all that data and implement, implement it into, 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 into Arsenal? Sure. That's what I'm saying. He'll make us work. Fam, for me right now, Arsenal fans, we need to accept what we are. We're not a top club anymore in terms of, like, we're a mid-table club, mm-hmm. right? Why not start with a person that hasn't coached anyone before? It can't get any worse. Let's see it what it can. It can get worse if, it's, if you've got someone that hasn't coached anyone before. Yeah, obviously it can get worse. Like but Lampard, you can see Lampard. Yeah, yeah, Let's look at Lampard. He went, Arteta, what, who, what, who, what, 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 what club has he, has he? City. No, 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 no. He hasn't caught. Look at Lampard. As a main manager. Lampard went to do his. Look at Gerard right now. I'm not saying Gerard's anything, yeah, yeah. but he's gone to Rangers. Yeah, yeah, They've managed before fine. going to the big but job. Fine. That experience at City is deeper than any Derby and any, and any Rangers. Yeah. Fact. Yeah. It's deeper. He's seen things on a day to day that's players. deeper than any Derby and. I've Rangers. seen things in that Instant City documentary that I could be a manager after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Fam, like, I wouldn't. At the moment, I'm so Emery out that I wouldn't even mind. And I'll take her in, and that's just. How I was just thinking, me for uh, for me, I was just thinking someone thing. more prem, prem proven, and you know that. Okay, we're not where we are right now. We need someone to come in that that knows how to. You know who I was thinking. Yeah. You might laugh, but Ooh. someone like Rafa Benitez. I swear down, Rafa Benitez. Yeah, he does his thing quietly, yeah. but with the resources that he can get from yeah. from Arsenal, yeah. like look what he did with Newcastle. You got what I'm saying? Like yeah. I think, bro, like. You just need a manager that can connect with the players for one, and I think that's an that's a huge thing in football now. Like, Massive. you see all these coaches, they they're with their players. They're like their players want to die for their coach. Mm-hmm. You get me? Mm-hmm. I feel like at the moment nobody gives a damn about Emery. You can see, <laughs> bro. You can see like a liking post about yeah, get this guy out. The disrespect is so high right now that like, mm. there's how can you expect the players to then go on match day and play and perform to a high level 
when they don't even respect the coach. You can't. I think, I think if, like I said, going back to Arteta, I think if Arteta came in, the one thing he would do that he's definitely learned from Pep is the work rate off the ball. I think you'll be getting players that can work off the ball in, t- in terms of winning the ball back quick so the players can express themselves mm. and whatnot because that's what you got to do. You know, the quicker you win it back, the quicker you express yourself and mm. the DNA of Arsenal obviously is expressing themselves and attacking football. Yeah, but right now in football, you have to work hard. Even the little teams now, yeah, yeah that's got a bit of money behind them and that. Yeah. They're getting players that are working. Leicester, yesterday, bro, Vardy was... Char- obviously, Vardy's different, but yeah. bro, they were chasing the ball at the 90th minute. They were still pressing. Yeah. That's what that's what Brendan's got them doing. So dots, international period coming up now. By the time we hit the next team talk, are you hoping that we're talking about Emery yeah, Saka yeah, or? I'm hoping that he gets sacked, but they've, they've already come out today and say like, look, we're not on sacking this guy. So you lot with your noise, they said noise. They literally categorically said noise. You lot with your noise, it's not going to make no difference. We're not sacking this guy until the end of the season. We're not looking at the manager p- uh, position at least until the end of the season. So right now, I said it earlier. Listen, if they don't want to hear, they have to feel. And these they need to start making noise at these games. Emery out. Get their banners out. Get your white papers with the Emery out. They need to start making visible noise. We're not playing. Because it's like, you can't say, oh, we're going to wait till the end of the season. So we should suffer till the end of the season. Bro, right now, I'll, I'll be honest with you listeners. I don't even like watching Arsenal football. I think, after, I might tap out, you know. Let me just have this international break. I, bro, I'm watching Sky Sports HD, Ultra HD. I'm feeling physically sick, G, at what I'm seeing. It's not entertaining. I'm not. I'm not enjoying it. I'm just looking at the TV in complete anger, G, all the time. I mean, Arsenal's next run of games: yeah. Southampton at home. Okay. These are winnable games, so like, bruv, it can the, the, the momentum beds. can change. Oh, bruv, we're gonna wet the bed. Like, I'm telling you, even if we do win, it will be crappy, jammy, scrappy wins. Mm. It will be that. I'm telling you, football. We've watched football for how many years, guys? It doesn't just switch like that. We're playing poorly, and we're not doing much. I, we're not playing good football. Can I ask one more thing before we come off this subject? Yeah. What's your feelings on Pepe? Uh, bring it here. Pepe, fam, he's had a difficult start, mm-hmm. right? But it's, it's the quality is there. So I, the quality is there and I'm going to be like this. I'm going to be that guy and say like, look, and the coach and the system and everything that's going on is... The reason, yeah. It's messing him up a bit. It's messing him up a bit. Already you're coming to a new league. Yeah, you're coming to a new league. And already the manager's he's already waved. He's already stupid. So this is what this is what I want to ask Arsenal fans. With all the players that you've got right now, dots, your yeah. opinion. Yeah. What's your starting eleven? You. Mine, yeah. Easy. Like it's that. easy. Okay, go on. What formation first? Uh four three three. Okay, go on. Uh Leno. Yeah. Um Tierney. Um Louise. Yeah. Holding. Yeah. Bellerin. Okay. Then the midfield three. Holding. No. no, I'm saying holding. Oh, oh, Torreira, Torreira, Guendouzi. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Boy, Danny no. Spiles. Yeah, 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 fam. You put Danny Spiles as much as I, he hasn't done much for me, but you put Spiles because I don't like Ozil. So you put him in the middle with Guendouzi and Torreira. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. The front three. Um, I'd put Pepe, yeah. Abamyang, yeah. <sighs> Martellini. I like him. On the wing. I'm on the yeah. wing. Forward. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. This yeah. is why people are saying a war be selling you. They shouldn't have done it then. Oh, you could have bro. sold him, no, 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 but not at that point. Sorry, because no, natural no. wingers and oh, people no. are going to run at you. I asked him that question, the reason why I asked him that question, I wanted to see if he was going to do the Pepe. Laka. Laka no, no, no. Because like I said, with Emre, okay. even he can see himself as bad as he's been. He can see the unbalance yeah. when you play Lacazette and Aubameyang. Yeah. But they're both big personalities and yeah. big players that if you drop one or the other... It could go pear shape for you. But the thing is, right? People saying like it's, we won't work. It has. It's worked before. They've connected and they've played together, and it's they've it's been fruitful, right? I just don't think at the moment you just got to play Aubameyang central because he's the deadliest there. He's dead more deadly than Lacazette there. Simple as put. Simple as that. It can work. The three of them can work together. If 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 their front three, the Pepe, Lacazette, and Aubameyang play together, it could work. I'm not saying it couldn't, because like, Aubameyang can play from the wing. But for me, I'd play Ab- Aubameyang central, have Pepe on the right, and maybe a Martinelli on the left. Okay. All, right. All right, well, that's it for this week. The internationals next week. Uh, Ballon d'Or. Hmm? Ballon d'Or. What about it? No, I'm just saying that, like, that, that, that I thought we were going to discuss the Ballon d'Or in terms of who that's coming up soon and who should be getting it. At the end of Who's the, the nominees? Is how, is it, have they shortlisted it to three? Or, yeah, yeah. I don't know if they shortlisted it to three, but I'm saying that Mane should get Ballon d'Or mm. this year. That's me. 
Mm. Personally, I don't think anyone's had a better year than Mane. Yeah, Messi. About, nah, 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 nah. This whole Messi thing. Now nah, it's just his name now that's getting in the conversations now. Like, no, because no, because no, how many goals? Is, 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 is it calendar year or seasons? How do you do? Let me tell. Let me tell you why. Because a lot of the Ballon d'Or. It's a lot of it is based on European football. Yeah, it is. We a know, lot of it over the years. So we let's know. be consistent. Yeah, let's yeah, not yeah. say the that. The same energy Messi's than, than is Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. 50, let's have that same energy. And no, Liverpool. Lost. They should have the same yes, energy. Liverpool, yeah. the Ballon d'Or. Liverpool lost the league by one point mm-hmm. and they went and won the Champions League. And Mane is the best at them front three. And he should win the Ballon d'Or. That's me. There's no other person. Is he recognised as the best in that team? I think Salah's still recognised mm. by, by hey, the mass. Listen, listen, listen. No. Salah might be recognised by. The FIFA people, yeah, the those people to. I don't you think know. he's recognised by them. I think Mane, he's recognised ahead of Salah now as the best. Really? I think so. For me, for me, I haven't felt that shift yet. I've always, I've, I've always thought Mane was yeah, the guy. Yeah, but yeah. who? I'm, I'm asking you guys. Who do you think should win the Ballon d'Or? I mean, if you're looking around Europe, it's yeah, it's, get, it's not go, a bad shout. I'd go Van Dijk or, or Mane. I can't go Van Dijk. Now, now I don't like all these defenders winning it anyway, yeah. but I'll go Mane. But that's harsh if we can't, if or not, I'm not, not, not defenders. Yeah, man. Come on, man. Like, I know, I know what you lot are saying, but I'm not on all that. They're important. Cool. Yeah, they're cool, they're important. You've got to put the border back in the net. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the it's end of the day, you've got to put the border back in yeah. there. And it's always attacking, there's always attackers at the end of the day. We never talk about how good um, Varane and yeah. Ramos have been for Real Madrid, but Ronaldo wins the Ballon d'Or. Yeah, yeah. Because he's banging in the goals. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'd go for, I'd go, this is my, this would be, I think what the top three should be, yeah. It should be, um, Mane, Van Dijk, and Messi, boy. That's mm, okay. That's, okay. How they, that's how they should reward That's fair. That's how they should reward it. All right, people. Till next week. Peace and love. Have a good week. 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 Good week.